Welcome to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. I am Dina Dow, your host, and this looks a little different today on Catholic Life. <laughs> We're talking about the second Sunday of Advent through the eyes of children, and I'm so excited to invite my friend, Cherie Gio. She is the principal of Most Blessed Sacrament School here in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. And we're going to talk about how the Catholic identity resonates through most blessed sacrament, but most in particular, the season of Advent. So thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me. And thank you for that compliment about our Catholic identity at most blessed sacrament. Oh, yeah. We're it's so beautiful. Yeah. Your yeah. social media is so good. It kind of really sharing the ways that the faith is handed on through mm -hmm. the school. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But okay. first, before that, you know, you had a life before principal. Yes. So tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you came into education okay. and the calling to be a principal. Sure. Um, I was born in a family where my, my dad was a cradle Catholic and went to Catholic school and my mom was Baptist. And before they were married, um, my grandmother made her convert. So she converted to Catholicism. Um, as a young child, we were very active in our church parish of St. Isidore mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge. And um, when we got older, I remember going to CCD, but I don't really remember being active in the church. So around probably 13, we moved to New Roads and I started at St. Mary's, uh, a Catholic High of Point Capi uh -huh. and joined St. Mary's Catholic Church. And I really think that's where my faith blossomed at that point. I um, was super active in the church choir and on the um, the council for the, the youth at the church. Um, I think I was even the president of the youth group. Yeah. Um, and um, spent many, many wonderful weekends, retreats at retreats with um, the retreat team from LSU and my mm -hmm. classmates and mm -hmm. just really, really loved our faith. So. Um, Moved on to LSU for college, and my husband was a PKT, which is known as the Catholic Fraternity. Right. And I think Dina's husband and my <laughs> husband there. were fraternity we brothers. We found that out later. Yes. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, the PKT house was right behind Christ the King. And my mm -hmm. husband and I often studied in the library at PKT, I mean, at the Christ the King, and we went to church together. Wow. And um, it was really interesting because our families really had were very, very similar, both Catholic, both three children, kind of similar socioeconomic um, backgrounds. And so a lot of things that people have when they get married, we just, since we grew up so similarly, it was wow. pretty easy. I mean, we knew we wanted to be Catholic. We knew we wanted to be married in the faith. Yeah. Um, we knew we wanted to raise our children Catholic. We knew we wanted them to go to Catholic school. So um, so anyway, we married and uh, we'll celebrate our 34th wedding anniversary oh, this great. year, December 29th. And we have two children. Um, we have a daughter who's in med school and a son at LSU. Wow. And they both attended uh, Our Lady of Mercy and then Catholic High and St. Joseph's Academy. They're in so, school. Wow. Yes. So yeah. um, it's been a wonderful gift that uh, my husband and I are so happy that we were able to give our children um, that gift gift of Catholic education. And you're continuing the mission yes. of Catholic education yes. through your vocation yes. as a teacher. Yes. So that, and that's kind of funny. As a teacher, I never really wanted to be a teacher. Uh. I fought it tooth and nail. And when it was time for me to choose a major, I even had to go to some sort of class to try to figure out what I wanted to be. And it came up teacher. So uh. um, I ended up a teacher. I started my teaching career at Our Lady of Mercy. I taught pre-K and kindergarten, which is why you have toys oh, today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so that's where my, um, my, you know, my husband and I are members of, of Our Lady of Mercy, so um, we've built our, our faith life around Our Lady of Mercy. Mm -hmm. And um, as my career has moved, um, I guess people saw in me things I didn't because I ended up going into administration and ultimately have become the principal at Most Blessed Sacrament wow. School. Wow, yeah. So. How long has that path been? Is that 30 years? Um, about 30 years, yes. Yeah. Yes. Would you ever imagine yourself as principal of a Catholic no. school? <laughs> no, because I was probably the one in the principal's office. So <laughs> oftentimes I tell the children that are in my office, I was there one day yeah. and you could make a change. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, you're a good witness of conversion. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I good. didn't do anything really bad. But, yeah, yeah, just mischievous, <laughs> keeping your teachers on your toes. Yeah. yeah. yeah Wait, what's yeah. your favorite subject? I always love to ask teachers that question. Home ec was my favorite subject. <laughs> Mom was choir Home ec and, French and religion. And yeah. French. I uh -huh. loved my French class. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mine was choir mm -hmm. and religion. So I think we're yeah. pretty much 
<laughs> where we should be. <laughs> English, math, no. <laughs> so talk about the role. I know we're going to get into Advent in a little bit, but let's talk about the role of the Catholic identity in the Catholic school and then your role serving as principal. What's mm. that mean to you when I say that? Um, so my two longest positions within Catholic schools were at Our Lady of Mercy and have been at Most Blessed Sacrament. Wow. And I'm very fortunate because they both, when I went to both schools, they both had very strong Catholic identities. Yeah. And so um, what I've been fortunate to do is just to continue mm. what was already in place through that rich Catholic identity. And um, we've added things to it. We've tweaked things. We, you know, we've tried to make things um, even more. I think, I think Catholic identity is super important because of what children are exposed to today. So I think you know, we really have to be have a, a very strong Catholic identity mm -hmm. at the school yeah. level. Yeah, because to kind of combat in, what happens when you walk in, you can just see it. Yes, when you, you know? walk onto our campus, we have the Stations of the Cross. Um, our classrooms all have religious bulletin boards. Um, we have a whole calendar that's nothing but religious events throughout the year. Um, in the last couple of years, we've added adoration monthly to the to for school wide adoration wow, for the children. That's great. Um, we do reconciliation twice a year. We have grade level retreats. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's really immersed into the curriculum yeah. and the children yeah. receive religious instruction every day. Mm -hmm. We go to mass once a week. So um, we're very and fortunate. And the teachers are minister too. Yes. You know, they yes. have experiences and retreats yes. and in yes. services and opportunities yes. for prayer. So our, they do. Our teachers go to two retreats a year. We have um, morning prayer at the beginning of the week, every week. Mm. Uh, a teacher sends prayers out to the faculty every day of the week, um, and it goes through the faculty throughout the year. Um, and um, the teachers take, uh, they participate in all of the activities that the students participate in. Mm -hmm. And a uh, couple years ago, um, it was, we do the ministry and theology classes through yes. the diocese. Mm -hmm. Our teachers were only required to do ministry, ministry, ministry and theology one. Mm -hmm. And now I have everybody doing both one and oh, two. That's great. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And this comes through the Office of the, Evangelization. We, yeah. We deliver great. the faith. You know, we are the keepers of the faith. And yeah, which to, is beautiful because it can come up in any subject, it can, right? It Science, does. social studies, English, math, even math, you it know, does. can talk yeah. about the faith. But it's about being, you know, and becoming and encountering the Lord in all ways. And if you happen to be studying, you and know, modeling, yes. you know, you model through your words, actions, and deeds, and your witness. mind, body, and spirit. Um, yeah. And I also think it's super important to point out that, um, you know, according to our faith, the parent is the primary educator of the child, right. especially right. when it comes to matters of the faith. So we are definitely a partner with the family. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the things we struggle with in the school setting is really ministering to families because so many families aren't in church. Right. They don't have you know, they don't they don't witness to their children like we do at school. And right. so it's trying to pull families in. And every time I see children as altar servers or families together in mass, it just gives me hope that, yeah. you know, that that's going to live on throughout our families. And that most is sacrament. so important, too, especially with you know, the title of the school and the church is mm -hmm. the most blessed sacrament, which is the source and summit you know, right. of our faith is the Eucharist right. too. Right. I'm thinking too, though, as we're kind of moving to talking about Second Sunday in Advent, are the opportunities that we can minister to parents through their children and some of the things that they're doing at the school and they yes. take it home. Yes. I remember when my girls were in school, the first thing I was, you know, I was like, pull out your homework and what did you do in religion class mm -hmm. today? That mm -hmm. was just, that was just the conversation. Right. And so they were able to share their faith and then get into algebra or, right. you know, English or whatever. Right. So what about the Advent fund? I know this is kind of your so, forte. So, well, during <laughs> Advent, um, you know, we really focus on the waiting. Uh, we're yeah. not a school that you come in during Advent. You're not going to see secular Christmas. Right. So you're going to see um, Advent wreaths in the classroom. We do, we say an Advent prayer at assembly every day. Um, and there's no Santa and those sort of sa yeah. snowman, you know, it, it's going to be Advent. Um, and we've really, really try to focus on the waiting. So children get an advent calendar. They all get an advent calendar that they can open every day. Nice. Um, the younger kids have an advent calendar that maybe suggests do a good deed for a neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, we say advent prayers. So all of the focus goes directly to the waiting for 
for the Christ child to yeah. come. And, um, you know, I brought some goodies because um, one of the things that I've grown to love over years has been nativities. So the children actually gift me nativities. So I brought some <laughs> of the things they've given me or nativity ornaments. My Christmas tree now is just a nativity tree, so they're full of nativity <laughs> ornaments, which I love. Yeah. Um, many of you are familiar with Elf on the Shelf. Right. We've, um, we do Advent Angel. So yep. this is Joy. Just joy. So Joy moves around the room like the Elf on the Shelf does. In each classroom. In each in each classroom. <laughs> I think I may the, have the, to buy of the one younger for children. Yeah. Of the younger children. Yeah. Um, we do. Um, it's stable on the shelf where they add hay to oh, the stable every time they do yeah. a good deed for baby Jesus to come. Um, yeah. We uh, read the Advent story a page of a page a day to mm -hmm. so it builds up until the um, till Christmas. Um, we do a Jesse tree every oh, year. Wow. So one of the grade levels processes and does a Jesse tree. Really? Tell um, me about that. Do they make their own ornaments for the Jesse tree? No, we have we have ornaments that are um, you know, part of our um history at yeah. MBS. Oh yeah. And yeah. they hang the tree up and tell a little story about each of the oh, ornaments as they go. Which up. tells the story of salvation it history, does. which is yeah. a great way to hand on that message of That's how beautiful. the Lord, you know, what happened before the coming of our Lord Jesus. Yes. What grade yes. level does that? I think our first grade does oh, the Jesse wow. tree. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. It's really cute to watch yeah, them go up and put yeah. the ornaments on. Mm. Do y'all do a nativity so, or anything like that? We do. We do a nativity play um, mm. w at right before school ends, um, and it's lessons and carols. So it's the lessons of Jesus's, you know, up to Jesus's birth. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and then it provides the nativity at the end. Mm -hmm. And I actually use that picture every year for the Christmas card we send out to, oh, our, to our school friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a student, does a student do a piece of art and then it's a our color students shape? do do an mm -hmm. art. So um, every year we do an advent poster that's posted in every classroom Cute. and the fourth graders do the art and we uh -huh. pick the, we pick one and we make big posters that are put on our front gate and in our gym. And then there's a smaller poster that all the teachers put on their Advent bulletin boards. Yeah, I, I'm just going to come and visit. Yeah. Please come. Please come. <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Shuri Gio, the principal of Most Blessed Sacrament, and celebrating Advent and getting prepared for Christmas through the eyes of children. Stay with us. We're right back in just a minute. Shining through darkness, Advent joy lights the night air. For kindly Saint Nicholas was making his way there. But wait for a moment, <laughs> there's a pause in his plan. <laughs> We're reminded Santa's priority should be that of every woman and man. For peace to flourish and love to abound, our souls must come home the King of Kings must be found. For centuries, wise men sought the Savior first. Knowing only Jesus can quench our heart's greatest thirst. So come home to Mass and celebrate the holy Christian season. For love is born tonight. Our hope for heaven, the reason. We are the fog on your glasses. We are the cup to go at breakfast. We are the answer to your deadline. We are closing, clo closing the deal. But more than anything, we are never being out of coffee ever again. Never. We are River Road Coffees, and we're ready to prove that our coffee is better than whatever coffee you're drinking at the office. Call us today for a side-by-side -side taste test so you can get powered by River Road Coffees. Welcome back to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. I am Dina Dale, your host, back with Cherie Gio, 
who is the principal of Most Blessed Sacrament School here in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. So we're having way too much fun talking about <laughs> Advent and Christmas through the eyes of children. But you know, there is such a greatness about that. Even um, I think the older we get, yeah, the more we look forward to children or grandchildren to really kind of bring back, I think what is a pure joy of the, of the celebration leading up to Christmas. I love the way that you were saying earlier, which is a little unusual that Chris, it, it's Advent at the school, right? right? So, right. you know, nothing against Santa Claus and the reindeer and the snowmen, but right. you really focus on the preparations leading up to Christ. What right. inspired that? Has that been something that you brought in or tradition with the school? I think um, it was a tr tradition with the school, but I think we are even more focused mm -hmm. um, than before. And, um, you know, when we ask the children what we're celebrating, they'll tell you now the birth of Jesus. They don't say Santa Claus. Yeah. Um, they know that comes later. Mm -hmm. But um, but even, you know, even the activities in class, um, many of our teachers ha do thematic activities based upon the seasons to teach. Yeah. And so those activities are Advent. They're not wow. Santa Claus. So, um, so, you know, you'll see at the make advent wreaths or um i was in the break room or in the workroom with a assistant yesterday and she was cutting out roses because they were making the immaculate heart of mary wow. um so it's all focused on you know the liturgical seasons there's a huge emphasis on the liturgical yeah, seasons. i mean just even teaching yes. the symbols of the advent mm -hmm. wreath and then you could teach the little ones their colors mm -hmm. you know and what and they mean what they mean mm -hmm. and the lighting of the candles mm -hmm. number one mm -hmm. two three yeah I, mm -hmm. I, there's so many lessons that come from that and i also think it's important a lot of times the adults take the lead in those things, but our children at the school are the ones who are actually lighting the wreath, saying the prayers. They are, we're teaching them to carry these traditions on. If the adult is always the person that does it, the children will never be empowered to take that on right. and bring it into their own homes later on when they are adults. Do y'all do these every year? Is it something every that when year. the kiddos, when they graduate, they come back and they go, oh yeah, I remember doing this this year? They they're do. traditions. They yeah. actually become, they're, they're very well-loved traditions at our school. And the question is too, is when they carry that out later in life at mm -hmm. home. I know mm -hmm. we were talking about decorating mm -hmm. in our home. We have kind of a living room and a kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And the kitchen area is all Advent. Mm -hmm. It's purple. It's got the Advent wreath. It's got prayer. Everything is purple. Mm -hmm. And then when you walk into the other room, it's got the Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so mm -hmm. there's like a distinction, you mm -hmm. know, in our home. Because I don't have time to put all that up <laughs> right before In my Christmas. home, it was kind of a mix. But we did do Advent prayers at dinner time. Yes. So I had an Advent yeah. wreath and we did Advent prayers. And um, I learned this at one of the schools I was at. There was a call to action during Advent. How yes. are you going to take it out? Yeah. So I always had a call to action for my children in their prayers. Mm -hmm. How are you going to live this tomorrow when you go to school? Yeah. So that was one piece. And then I had an Advent calendar. And a lot of people put toys, candy, whatever. I put that in there. But I also put a deed. Yeah. So it would mm -hmm. go bring the neighbor's newspaper in or take in their garbage cans. So when they pulled their daily things out, they also had an Advent item that they had to take and do some sort of kindness. So that's how we celebrated Advent in our home yeah. and the waiting for Jesus. We would mm -hmm. put out, or we still do, all the nativity scenes, like the yes. crushes, because yes. we put that, but yes. we don't put Jesus in the scene. Okay. We have a, uh, a kind of a red glitter box. So we put all the, all the little crushes mm -hmm. in the box mm -hmm. and put it way under the tree. Oh, neat. And then, um, so all the crushes are you know, empty. Oh, that's beautiful. And then on Christmas morning, which we still do, mm -hmm. and our daughters are in their late 20s, you know, the, the first present they open is, that? is the glitter box. Oh, so they'll go, they go, no, 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 yeah. don't touch your stockings. So they'll go grab it. That's beautiful. Place Jesus in, and then we start the celebration beautiful. of gifts. Yeah, yeah, it's something that I learned. It wasn't original. I learned that when my children were oh, little. that's beautiful. And so that's one of the things. And I think that's one way that we can really help our children um, learn so much about the meaning mm -hmm of the gift of Christ uh, at home. And it's very simple to do. I, I know at home, the first thing that I do put up is my nativity. And it was yeah. interesting because I had asked my mother for a nativity for my first anniversary after my oh, husband and I got married. Sweet. So the pieces are very big. They're just plain white and glazed. But 
it is, it's a process. And, uh -huh. you know, we put it up together and then we step back and we're yeah. like, it's, you know, now it's, now it's the Christmas season yeah. or Advent season. Yeah. So. We decorate the day after Thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> only because everybody's in town now. That makes and so sense. You know, we can kind of celebrate that joy and that, that it's sense. there when they come back in town too. That makes sense. Um, what's your message to families during Advent? Thinking about your experience growing up in your family, what you're learning from your students and your faculty. It's a message for our families I, during Advent. I think, um, you know, the the season leading up, Advent leading up to Christmas is such a busy, busy time. And I think it's a time where we need to take time to be with our families, to talk about the birth of Jesus and how Jesus came for us. Um, and I think, you know, just taking some extra time during that season wow. to to really devote um, to, to teaching your children about this wonderful gift that was given to us. That's one piece. I also think it's a wonderful time to um, to give to others. Yeah. Uh, we, our children are so fortunate and have so much. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's a time to focus on others in need. Yeah. And... Um, you know, one of the things y'all had asked me about, it was the second week of Advent. Well, the second week of Advent is about peace. Yeah. And I think today with all of the strife in our own communities mm -hmm. and in the world, mm -hmm. right now is a super perfect time mm -hmm. for us to talk about peace and how we can be channels and vessels of peace to others and how can we share peace. Mm -hmm. And so I think this Advent for me, peace is really special. And something happened to me yesterday. I ordered a Christmas present for my son and um, off of Etsy. Mm -hmm. And I got a message back from a woman in Ukraine. That's where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. And she said, please pray for us. She said, it may take a while for it to get here, but to get to you, but I will get it to you, but because of the war. And it just struck me like, here we are getting ready to celebrate Christmas. And these poor people are living in mm -hmm. just turmoil. So I stopped and I, t I wrote her and I said, you are in my prayers. I pray for you every day. Yeah. So I think it's a really important time. And then of course, with Jerusalem and Israel and Gaza, I think it's time to really- That's a you great know. connection mm -hmm. to, you know, just a simple gift order. All of a sudden you're mm -hmm. connected with someone that's in a war torn zone that we mm -hmm. hear about and we pray about, but now you're like, no, there's a person mm -hmm. at the other end mm -hmm. working to maintain a living, yes. right? And to offer things. Yes. At the same time too, being grateful Mm -hmm. what you have, and then sharing your prayers with other people, which prayer is so important to you. I found always during the Advent season with the busyness is to like, okay, let's just take time to be unbusy. Mm -hmm. Like, is it important, is it necessary to reprioritize, focus on, you know, celebrating the Sunday Masses. It's easy to buy so many Christmas little books, mm -hmm. resources, read sacred scripture, mm -hmm. and like you said, tell the story, mm -hmm. tell the story. Mm -hmm. Tons of saints during that season too. Absolutely. Gosh, that week, Our Lady of Guadalupe is right in the middle mm -hmm. of the season to really just offer those, you know, uh, prayers of, of witnessing the story of the faith. It's, and it doesn't take very long. No. And I like the mealtime um, activities. There's a lot of Lenten reflection booklets. Mm -hmm like for children or for families yeah. and at the end they have the activity of you know let's go out and do this cuz once you you hear right. about the lord you learn the lord your heart is moved to to go out on mission well lent aside i think family meal time is one of the most important times and i think it's a lost a yeah. lost event yeah. um and that as a family that was one of the things we did we mm -hmm. had dinner together every day yeah, yeah. and so um those were wonderful times yeah you know, when my children were little and, to and we i commit to that encourage people to commit to that because yeah. it's super important yeah take a holy mm -hmm. pause and step back mm -hmm. especially during the time of peace yes. you know when this weekend and that focus of that yes and peace beginning at home yeah yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. It's a good yes. time, <laughs> yes. an opportunity for reconciliation, yes. personally for ourselves through the mm -hmm. sacraments, right? But also to making amends with other within people in your families. family. I mean, you know, you get children, siblings argue, and yeah. husbands and wives argue. I mean, it's definitely. Yeah. It's normal, it's part of life, yeah. but it's how you handle it. That I was also thinking important. to um, expectations, right? What type of expectations are we placing upon ourselves mm -hmm. during this time? Yes. 
and on other people. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. I know like you make beautiful charcuterie boards, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> it's like, but that's could be therapy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and learning, but like what are the expectations are we placing on ourselves? Some people right. are in an opportunity where they cannot give as many gifts, right? you right. know, but you can offer yourself and sacrifice Absolutely. Um, prayers to me too, or something mm -hmm. very important. I also think about people that are ill during the season of Advent and those that are hospitalized. Yes. On Christmas Day, we usually end up visiting someone at the hospital mm -hmm. because someone just happens to be there. Mm -hmm. um, usually, sometimes it's one of our friends that has a child that's mm -hmm. in and out of the hospital, but making sure we remember people that um, are people that have lost loved ones during yes. the season too. Yes. You know, because it's sometimes first Christmas and absolutely celebrating, making celebrations of yeah. it too. Yeah. So I'm thinking about um, your life as a principal and a teacher. Does any story stand out for you with a teacher or a child that would resonate in your heart? Absolutely, yes. Um, so we have a family at MBS who lost a daughter when she was in second grade. Um, right before her first communion. Mm -hmm. And so her um, younger brother is now at school. And I want to say about four years ago, um, well, back up a little bit, They, um, the parents planted a tree mm -hmm. um, in her memory and they put a stone that says, um, you'll always be one of our classmates. Okay. So we, we're building a building. So the tree had to come down. So we moved the little, the stone out to a plate the playground. And so the children were coming, I think they were in fourth grade, they were coming off the playground. And I happened to be in the front office and I looked at the video cameras of the playground and there were nine children kneeling around the little stone mm -hmm. and they were saying the Our Father for this little girl. Oh my goodness. And I thought, this is why I teach in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have stories like that that happen to me every day. Mm -hmm. Like the children, you know, I look at the children and I see the face of Christ every day. And that's what makes me want to get up and go to work. And who can say that they see the face of Christ every day? Right. And, and I can. Yeah. I see them when the children come in my office who are in trouble. I see them when the children come to my office and need support. Mm -hmm. I see, you know, I just see it when they're kind to each other. I see it when they, you know, talk about their faith. Um, and it's just, it's, it's what keeps me going. And, um, and I'm so grateful and humbled and uh, honored that God chose this profession for me yeah. um, because I do get to see the face of Christ every yeah. day. And we're grateful you said yes to that, <laughs> even though it was something you had never even thought of. Right. The Lord right. just surprises us he with does. our mission. Uh, we would have does. never expected. And also the abundance and the blessings that you can see him through Absolutely. that. Thank you so much for your your vocation and your mission oh, you're welcome. as an educator and a principal oh, and an leading honor. all of those children and their families to encounter Jesus Christ each day. You're such a gift. Oh, thank thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you. thank you for being with us on Catholic Life. Until next time, may God bless you and grant you his peace.